everyone. I'm uh, Claudio Morgan, and I welcome you to the Co-Creative Awakening Summit, Wisdom and Wellness, Path to Healing. My guest is Cristiana El Trayan. Cristiana, thank you for accepting uh, our invitation. It's my pleasure, as always, to collaborate with you, and thank you for inviting me. You know, there are so many any healing modalities these days that are outside the conventional structures that it is worth talking about them over and over again until people start paying attention. Your experience is vast and you study so many modalities and today maybe we'll focus on two or three of them. And I think you, uh, at your beginning, uh, you went to uh, Australia and you studied with uh, Jazz Mohin, her uh, Breatharian method and also the dark room uh, reset uh, approach. How did you adapt those modalities to what you are doing today and how they help your clients? Uh, well, uh, I must say that uh, unfortunately till now I have never been to Australia, but hoping to arrive there soon. Uh, fortunately, Jasmohin has come to Romania many, many times, so I got to play with her and learn every year um, from 2009 until, I think, 2015. It's just yesterday that I visited the sac sacred site, no coincidence, the sacred site where she last had her last retreat in Romania. Since 2015, she didn't come back. And... Um, well, they are the modalities that I've learned, the darkroom retreat and the uh, breatharian, I call it the pranic nourishment because, you know, uh, we're not nourished by breath, we are actually nourished by um, our inner essence, our inner emanation, and uh, some of us are also connecting to external sources like the sun or the vibrations of nature, and the elements like water, fire, um, earth, uh, air, and ether. So this is what is actually nourishing us. We're converting it into energy, and we're also producing extra ATP, or uh, you know, the the energy that n nourishes our cells. And that's part of our life, and everyone is doing it. Actually, it's not something that only the trained one are doing. Uh, everybody's now producing more energy that they are consuming from food. I have a book here called the Pranic World Book. Maybe we've talked about it before, maybe not, but in it we have all the studies, including the NASA studies, that have proven that the human body is actually capable, in a normal state, without any energy training, is capable to produce uh, up to 25% more energy than it consumes from food which means that any human being, if he's not ill, if he's not in a in a imbalanced state of some sort, they are producing more energy than they intake from food. NASA called it an unaccounted source of energy. They didn't know how to call it. We call it prana, chi, mana, life force, and so on. And the book has the studies listed and the universities that have studied it and so on. And so many more scientific facts that are proving that actually any human being, as I said, is capable to be nourished by energy. And it's energy that is nourishing us. And then we are taking external resources like food, water, and so on, because we are, um, most of us, hybrid engines that are trained to convert physical matter into um, energy. We can do it directly if we try, if we learn the methods, if we uh, purify our bodies, our minds, and our emotions. So, basically, I, I can't say I've integrated it. It's, this is part of my life. This is my lifestyle. And as I am living, <laughs> you know, it's becoming part of my trainings, part of my retreats, part of everything I do. And sometimes, even people who are not interested in this, we have a normal conversation and then tomorrow they start fasting for like 10 to 40 days without even thinking about it. So it's, it's just naturally emanating as a lifestyle from everyone that is doing it. And um, the sacred sites, 
that you asked me about are also energy vortexes or energy sources for us because First, we have to define a sacred site to, for people to know what we mean, right? Uh, it's a place in nature where the energy is heightened, is more powerful than it is in your office or in your home. In such places, for example, in mountain or mountain areas or near rivers or in certain... Um, temple places like the pyramids for example or the temples in Egypt and so on you feel that even if you don't have an energy practice even if you don't have an energy training you might feel that you go up the mountain and you don't feel tired or all of a sudden you were tired but you feel more energized uh, without any energy drink, without any coffee, all of a sudden your energy rises. If you're empowered, you feel if you go more often or if you stay a longer time, you feel healed of some illnesses. There are people who have healed themselves just by visiting certain energy vortices or certain sacred sites of the planet. For example, in Romania, the, the Romanian Sphinx or the Temple of Wishes are such places of healing where I've taken people from all over the world and they had powerful, you know, uh, awareness moments, powerful um, consciousness rising moments, or even physical ailments uh, decreasing their intensity or being completely healed. And this is not far-fetched, it's all scientifically explained by the fact that the magnetism and the electricity in that area, the combination of these two forces, one is of the earth and one is cosmic, this combination of elements is more powerful in such places. There are many explanations why, I won't go into, into it unless you want me to, but it's very, very, very scientific, very measurable, very true, in, in other words. And I've learned to work and feel, work with and feel these places. I'm naturally guided to them. I'm naturally knowing what to do. I naturally know how to guide people what to do in such places so that they get more energy or some healing or some um, awareness moments. And uh, I love this part of my job. It's just amazing. Yes, in fact, it's not a job, it's something, again, as you said, it's a way of uh, life. Yes. And I would want to go back for a second to the book you mentioned and the studies that are listed in that book. Yeah. Um, is, based on your knowledge and your awareness, is the medical community uh, aware of such studies? And if yes, have they included them into their practice is there any desire to acknowledge such studies and go deeper um well uh, i'm happy that you asked this question because uh, in india we have uh, we have had um two studies conducted by a very powerful hospital in ahmedabad uh, two studies made on a person that hasn't taken physical food for 75 years. So a man that didn't need to eat for more than 70 years and also didn't need to drink. So the Ministry of Defense of India has requested that the renowned hospital of Ahmedabad, which had uh, as a leader, uh, he had a <clears throat> neuroscientist, they requested that they make a study on this person. So for 10 days and then for 14 days, there were two studies, one of 10 days, one of 14 days in that hospital <coughs> with 35 specialists, with many, many devices, measures, uh, security um, that was 24-7. Yes, security that was 24-7 monitoring this guy, including cameras, including personnel, including everything. <coughs> and they monitored and t took blood samples and all the tests that were necessary to see if this person is healthy, 
if their energy is decreasing, if any imbalance appears over the days, because, you know, you fast for one day, two days, three days, and then there's all kind of phenomena like ketosis, autophagia, and so on. This person <coughs> was showing great results. They were having amazing tonus. Their pineal gland was studied and monitored to be of the age of a young child. And there are also studies here in Romania. I've met neurologists in, um, there was a summit here next to my town and they know that pineal gland is getting younger during fasting. There are studies outside of Romania proving that. But in this study specifically in India, it was proven that this person was having the youth of a young child which is amazing at the age of, um, I think he was 80 at that time, you know, when he has been studied. Uh, we are talking about a sage, a saint from India, that normally they didn't even leave the cave, but he has accepted to do this study twice, just for humanity to have this proof that this possibility is existing, and to have it from a scientific uh, point of view. And... Uh, so the doctors yes, are aware. The doctors are aware. The head of this hospital, the head of this hospital, who is also a neuroscientist, has um, over time become my collaborator and my friend. So I know for a fact that he is very, very true, very, uh, very um, honest person and a very reputed um, doctor also his colleagues, and over time we have created a group of scientists. We have gathered a group of scientists. So this neurologist, the cardiologist, physicist, Nassim Haramim, geneticists, um, and so on. There's many doctors and scientists in this group that are researching this phenomena and are bringing the research that they found, or their point of view, uh, based on other studies and whatever they discover, uh, to um, bring more light on this topic. I'm not saying that all doctors are aware of it. <clears throat> Some are actually denying it, but I know that there are clinics all over the world now where fasting is recommended as a healing method. And fasting is the first part or the purifying part of this um, journey of being nourished by uh, prana. Because fasting is doing so many changes in your system. And also over time, it is showing you that you can fast and not be hungry. I have so many people around me that nowadays they notice that after the third day of fasting, they're no longer hungry. They're no longer um, experiencing so much sleepiness, so much brain fog, so much um, slowness that normal people are having in their day-to-day -day life. And they're experiencing firsthand how it is to be nourished by energy. And they never had the intention of feeling that, but they are just noticing what their body is doing. So yes, the medical community is to some degree aware of it, some are deeper into it, some are just um, yet to ignore it, but uh, this will change, and this changing exponentially over the years. There's so many fasting groups now, there's so many people who have demonstrated that they're nourished by external, by internal sources, so uh, I believe um, the humanity is changing rapidly in that department. Yes, and uh, we have even uh, Yogananda mentioned uh, a very unassuming woman in one of India's uh, villages that yes. uh, she was in her 70s and uh, for 50-something years she didn't uh, eat anything. She uh, even, uh, maybe I think she, if I remember correctly, she didn't even drink yes. a drop of water yes. uh, because she requested to the Divine Mother to keep her slim and force her not to eat anymore because of her mother-in-law which was pestering her all the time you're eating too much you're eating too much yes. so she made that uh, vow with uh, with divine mother that please 
stop uh, me from eating Help moving me, yes. forward. And, yes. Yeah, and it's a recorded case. Yes, it is. And uh, there's so many people. Uh, now there's thousands of people. There's no exaggeration um, that are experiencing this. There's There have been cases of saints in all traditions from um, Indian tradition, as you said, and the person that I have referred to, his name is Pralajani or Mataji. If anyone wants to look him up, I can also show you a bit of a video because I met him in person. He gave me the opportunity to test his chakras. So he took my hand and put it on his chakras for me to test it. And he put my finger on his top of the mouth, rooftop of the mouth to, for, to allow me to feel how this prana energy is literally flowing in his body so it was an exceptional moment um you know that not many people are experiencing from an indian saint but he just wanted to be so op so open and to show people what is possible he had no arrogance he had no um how to say spiritual ego he had nothing like this he would go through anything just to demonstrate what he came here to do. But apart from that, there's many cases, as I said, in Taoism, the Chinese and Asian religion, in uh, Christian religion, in um, Catholicism and so on, that uh, have reported people having had this experience. But nowadays, the good part is that it is not only... Um, reserved to sages living in caves. Many of us these days are having a very, not ordinary, but more mundane life. We are going through cities. I'm flying through airports all the time. I'm changing hotels. I'm changing, um, you know, environments, crowds of people and everything. I'm not living somewhere isolated most of the time. And many of my colleagues are, for example, in the science or in the business industry, which is right, quite busy, and yet they are having this lifestyle. So, um, and I have a surprise for you because I know you are, um, you know, also connected to the Romanian tradition. We just found this book. It's called Life on Gaia. Uh, in Romanian, it's called Viața pe Gea. It has been uh, written 30 years ago by a group of people that were downloading or channeling messages from beings of light that are supervising Rum Romania and humanity. It's actually called A Message from the Intergalactic Federation. This book is talking about pranic nourishment, since about pranic nourishment in Romania specifically, since 30 years ago. We have explanations, we have um, demonstrations, we have, they even say that if a person is moving from normal food to natural food, like uh, raw vegan food, they are having 10 times more energy in their body. And if they're moving to liquid food, which is very close to breatharianism, then they have a hundred percent more energy in their body so ten percent a hundred percent more energy no red no energy drink no coffee nothing just a change in your diet and this is a book that you know was hidden somewhere and we just republished it just because we want the people to have this information yeah amazing amazing thank you for for sharing that uh, with uh, the audience and let's say someone will approach you for the first time. What is your protocol for taking them through a uh, fasting process so the, uh, their body can sustain the, the shock, let's say, uh, and also uh, teaching them how to um, create the prana in their bodies? Because you know, mm -hmm. when you mentioned that the sage allowed you to put your finger into his mouth, <laughs> I assume that you felt that dripping of prana he creates by uh, touching his, maybe uh, uh, his tongue to the, the top of the mouth, yes. that closes the circuit and creates the, the prana. Yes. 
uh, well, uh, I want to I wanna state that this is an experience that I personally had also, and I am having this experience every day, but uh, feeling it in another person is even more uh, astonishing, right? Because uh, you, you, and his experience was much vaster than mine. But um, in my uh, view and in my work, we don't have shocking methods at all. And I'm not encouraging anyone to go through shocking processes at all. Uh, my methods uh, or the methods that I've channeled over the years are very, very organic, um, very natural, very easy to integrate. Uh, we, I'm teaching a program of eight days since 2013. So it's, um, it's more than uh, 10 years now uh, that I've been offering this program of eight days where we gradually move into a higher frequency and uh, we explain all the methods and all the um, technologies or, or even the, med the meditation that are necessary to be in that state. And over this program, people are advised to go on raw food and then liquids but very, uh, very smoothly, very easily. And um, we provide them all the meditations and the uh, exercises that um, can help them raise their frequency. So for eight days, you have a daily meeting with us and some... Um, specific detox methods, some specific, even essential oils, everything you need to do to raise your frequency. We don't teach people how to stop eating, actually. That's not my point in my life now uh, at all. I'm not even I am focusing on that. If I feel to taste something, I'll taste it. If I feel to have dinner with friends, I'll have a little bite. I cannot have too much food. I can have maybe a fistful of something vegan, but uh, it's no longer my focus to, um, to, be, to be just on Frana because that is creating, in, now I have to create some bridges with certain communities, with certain scientific groups, with certain, you know, I have to be of a certain frequency. So my focus now is to help people raise their frequency and, and it is organically moving them into a lighter diet. So there's no pushing, no forcing, no shocking. I even um, warn people when I feel they're going into ego-based choices, I warn them, now it's time to have soup or now it's time to have something solid. You are a bit unrooted. Um, you need to ground, do this, this, this. I don't encourage them to fast themselves into um, weakness or fast themselves into imbalance, ever. So um, it's very simple methods, something you can include in your day-to-day -day life anytime with a little bit of will, with a little bit of discipline. The program is called the Pranic Process Online. We can do it online. They can take it in video at home whenever they want. They can repeat the meditations, you know, as long as they want for a lifetime even because they have lifetime access. But doing these meditations or their, their, these exercises every day, it's impossible not to raise your frequency. We have sound healing. We use this, these bowls. There's 12 bowls that I'm using for sound frequencies. And people have quit sugar, have quit meat, have quit smoking, have quit all kinds of bad habits just by listening to these sounds and doing a meditation. It's so easy these days. If you tune into the right frequency, you no longer need to shock your body. And I know this because I've shocked mine quite a bit over my lifetime. So I know that now there's no need for that. Yeah. Yes, and when I said shock is that uh, yes, you, you talk of, about the gradual uh, giving in or giving up of certain fruits. And uh, yes, I heard this before that 
the first two weeks you give up uh, pork and uh, beef and uh, after two weeks you give up uh, let's say some sugary delight and then two weeks later you give up uh, fish and so on and so forth mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and yes i did go through that uh, process mm -hmm. i was pretty much um um vegetarian for a long time now from time to time i just eat a little bit of uh, fish mm -hmm. but nothing else and i don't consider myself a vegan mm -hmm. i feel great i um didn't lose weight mm -hmm. um, and I do fast uh, from time to time either 24 or 72 hours based on the environment because again environment is important and it will pull you in different uh, directions it's true yes and let's talk about the uh, the dark room this is something I uh, haven't tried yet and I've heard that the results are amazing and uh, Again, it's another modality of healing yourself by confronting your ego, by confronting your, uh, let's say, internal demons. Mm -hmm. How did you find this method to, to work for you? For me, it was organic. I um, am connected to many traditions. Uh, as I'm aware of some of my lifetimes, I will start like this. <laughs> uh, my other lifetimes, right? Some people call them past, but I call them parallel because they're actually happening now in many tradition this method exists we even have it in Romania you know there's the Zalmaxian tradition that is 500 years before Christ if I remember correctly where um, Zalmaxi which was the teacher and the leader of the population back then he would take 10 disciples in the mountains and he would teach them very high methods of energy uh, healing and energy um, mastery. Um, some of them were connected to um, uh, healing with plants, connecting to the elements, like I said, earth, water, fire, air, ether. Um, then you would have to know to master these elements to be able to change the weather, for example, or start or stop the storm and so on, stuff like that. But the highest initiation in this uh, school, the Zalmaxian school, was when you would be in a cave in the dark for many days with no access to the elements, so we can create an energy bubble around the person and he can no longer be nourished by external sources like uh, the elements or the air or anything. He would be completely isolated like a void, if you will, where he has no uh, sources of energy, right? And in that state, the highest initiation was for the person to be able to access his inner source of nourishment. And he wouldn't get out of the cave until he did it. <laughs> so this is in our tradition. This is no India, no China, no, um, you know, Tibet, high mountains of the Himalayas, nothing. It's here in the Carpathian Mountains, in the Transylvanian Mountains. And um, also I'm aware of Indian lives where I did this and so on. So I've lived these things before. That's why in this lifetime, I'm free from demonstrating it, yet it's naturally happening, <laughs> you know. However, um, I find, uh, so when I started doing this, it was back in 2012. I had one year of very intense purification, 2011, 2012. I don't think I've eaten much. I was going through a diet just with uh, cereals, water and salt for the whole year. It's called Oshava. It's a little rough. Don't recommend it to anyone, to, to most people because they, they don't react very well to it. But uh, this is what I did. And then naturally I went into t days of silence and days where I would isolate my sight. So I would be in dark. And I would do one days, two days, depending on what I could do, right? And when I entered the dark room of 10 days, it was a natural time for rest for me. It wasn't any challenge. It wasn't a difficulty with not having food or because you don't eat either. You, you have no light. 
you have no access to you know external distractions of any kind no technology and so on but you also don't eat for me it was like putting my system on hold finally resting all my nervous system digestive system everything and just being and it's so good even when I'm telling you now I'm entering that state oh my god I would just do it for 2,000 years at least you know to rest myself from all the work I did in this life so uh, I love it the next time I did 17 days uh, so first one was in 2013 the next one was in 2019 in 2019 I had two teachers I started with Mentic Chia he has a different method but also not so much food very little watermelon or something and a lot of meditation in silence and 10 days I or seven days I did with him and 10 days with Jasmine right after you know it was so to have the masculine and the feminine to have both energy it was a thing that I needed to do it's nice it's uh, rewarding it it's eye-opening I had the first awareness of my multi-dimensionality in 2000 13 when I did it first so I saw myself as a multi-dimensional being as a you know it's amazing I I wouldn't I wouldn't talk too much about it right now because it sounds like bragging about it but it's just the vastness that we are all of us not just me if you if you become aware of it you can never be distracted by thrifle things or even if you are, it's not for long. It's just for like playing a role and then you snap back into your vastness. It's amazing. It's it's worth it. I've had that state um, the next times I've had it even without the dark room. I can reiterate it any time, right? But when you're in dark and your your systems are just shut down, you don't use them right uh, you have much more uh, um, energy to expand yourselves beyond the common human uh, role that we are having here yeah yes we are amazing uh, biological computers of some of the, the scientists uh, tell us that uh, we are and um, we have to discover ourselves before this guys the powers to be want to uh, cheap us and enhance our capabilities uh, for something else but we are amazing as as we are right now yeah and all we have to do is to go deeper and find these capabilities within uh, by joining certain groups by finding the right uh, teachers by connecting with divinity in our own way or if some of us want to use religion to do that they are most welcome to do it others will just use their spiritual divine sight to to do it yeah um, any any way of doing it is not wrong it's just the fact that we want to do it and to become holy it is what matters yes well we are holy we are of the divine we are born from the same source all of us and we just need to discover it or remember it. That's my perspective. I have never felt, uh, since I was born, I've never felt um, separated from divinity, you know, from my divine essence. But um, maybe for a while I've chosen to forget it so that I can play a human role, you know, in corporate, in business, in marriages and so on. The essence is the same, whatever you do. It doesn't change, actually. Even in criminals, yes. even in drug addicts, even in the rapists that is taking women, it's the same. It's just the uh, external layers that are a, a bit shifted, you know. And once you clear that and the essence starts to rise, it's just amazing how fantastic we are as beings. We don't need yes, to be enhanced. We are already fantastic. Yes, and along the, the line you just uh, mentioned, I uh, interviewed Acharya Shunya uh, from India a while back, and she said, um, 
I was told that I, I'm going to get married, I'm going to have children. Yeah. But I never knew how to handle these relationships because I was in a different plane. Mm. Exactly. And then fully I really am and uh, fulfill my, my purpose on this existence. And uh, that that's beautiful. Yes. And the most amazing thing also is that... Um, we can be the masters of the big cities now. There was this tradition where you had to be a sage and to separate yourself from the normal life, from the day-to-day -day activities. But the biggest and best mastery is when you do the day-to-day -day activities and join many types of groups of many types of people and various types of mindsets and concepts and ways of living and all that stuff and yet you are the same you are centered yes. i was just the, the other day uh, traveling to the city with a friend and in that day i met i think four or five different type of people from the most holistic and um um, high energy uh, type of guys to the most down to earth business, uh, you know, um, investments and uh, cryptocurrency types of talks. We even talked about prostitutes and all that range of uh, energy frequency. And um, I was looking at how. I shift from one group to another in two hours being with all of them. Nothing shifted in me. You know, <laughs> I was just... Yes, you're not attached to the outcome. No, I was, I was the same. I was making this type of jokes with these ones, this types of conversations with this one, this one, this type of high energy uh, topics with the ones that were interested. I was the same. I was the same person. If you saw me with the investors, you would say I'm a business or, you know, mundane woman. If you saw me with the holistic ones, you would say, say I'm coming from my cave. If you saw me with the middle ones, you would say I'm a nutritionist. It doesn't matter. I'm the same. <laughs> you know? Yes, beautiful. So not to be impacted or shift your essence uh, according to the environment. It's very important. Yes, indeed. And Christiana, you mentioned the sacred sites of Romania. You mentioned the feminine and the masculine. Yeah. When you go to these sites, to Babele or the Sphinx or, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Samis of the Jujusa, yeah. how do you feel these energies? Do you feel that these sites are in balance or each of them has their own unique uh, energy, either feminine or masculine? Yes, I've been all over the world, actually. I've been from U.S. to yeah. Thailand to Egypt to, you name it, France, Italy, Spain, uh, Switzerland, and Romania. I just came, uh, I was just in a scientific gathering in the Alps, in Mont Blanc, uh, the other weekend, with Nassim Haramim and his team, and I was just noticing how the frequency is in these mountains, because the landscape is almost like Romania. It's very, very similar to the area where I'm living, yet the energy was so different. And in Romania, as you asked, the energy is different from one place to another. Some are very powerful, very masculine, young energy. Uh, others are more feminine. Others have both... Um, uh, frequencies intertwine, intertwine into it. Some are in balance and they really nourish you. Some are a little, and I've noticed over the past four years especially, that some of our more important sacred sites are very often needing a little fine-tuning, a little clearing, as if something is imbalancing them on purpose, you know. 
and uh, I'm amazed to see that and it's a constant work to clear them and upgrade them as they clear and upgrade us but for me it's it's awareness I feel them from a distance I know exactly when to go I know where when there is an imbalance for example in the throat chakra of Romania that is Sarmisegetusa as you mentioned or in the crown at the Sambata de Sousa and so on I feel that in my body, even from a distance, even if I'm in another country and so on. So, um, yeah, they are different. They are, they are like part of the same organism, if you will, because the body of the planet is very similar to, our, to the human body. And this is something very few are understanding, that the, the, body, of the, the, the body of the humans... Have been, has been created according to the elements and the chakras of the planetary body. And the planet is a being, is alive. <laughs> and it has chakras just like ours, and it's actually connected to our chakras. And it has elements just like ours, and their element, her elements are connected to ours. And then one is imbalanced, we are getting unhealthy. That's why the population now is more and more unhealthy. They are destroying the body of the planet, the source of their energy. It's crazy. Nobody thinks of it, right? Uh, it has blood and the lymph and everything, which we call petrol and other resources that we're constantly extracting and depleting her. And people are getting more and more ill because the planet is missing her blood and her fluids, right, in her body. It has um, meridians, just like ours. We call them ley lines in, in, uh, in specific language. And the ley lines are oftentimes cut off or interrupted by our constructions, our industry, our tunnels in the mountains, and so on. It's like cutting an arm and interrupting the energy circuitry in it. People don't think of it, but... For example, the Kagi population, which is living in the ants, in, in the mountains, right? They are trained to feel this, as I am, and they feel it from a distance all over the planet. They are um, trained to be in dark room for the first 30 years of their lives. So for 30 years, they don't see light, the, the, mo the most advanced of them, right? And then they get out. And they start uh, visiting so, uh, specific places of the planet. And they are very, very aware of everything that happens in the body of Gaia, in the body of the planet. They are very, very conscious of how to heal these meridians, these chakras, these interruptions. And it's very powerful now how badly we are impacting the planet. I'm not only talking about pollution. This is already overtalked, not resolved, but overtalked. I'm talking about the body of Gaia as a living being, which is impacting our living body. I don't know if anybody is talking about it openly or if there's been other sources that are, that are, that are raising this alarm, right? It's an alarm that I'm raising now that we are imbalancing the body of Gaia and this is very strictly connected to our bodies and the way they function and this is why we have to stop right not only that our children in like 10 years or 30 years our nep nephews and so on they won't have resources no it's happening now that people are getting ill it's happening yes. now that the circuitry in certain areas like we have the city of Brasov nearby. Uh, it's a very powerful energy vortex of Romania and of the planet. And there's many constructions and fabrics and industrial sites built on its meridians. And this is creating a very imbalanced energy in that city. Also in Bucharest, we have certain very important points. Bucharest is actually... Please, please, please keep talking. My battery is dying, so... All right. I'll be, I'll be like... Don't worry about it. I'll, I'll, I'll go on. Uh, Bucharest is a very important sacred site that has energy vortexes all over the place. 
and it's meant to keep in balance the whole country and even the whole planet. And because many things have been constructed in places where they shouldn't be, or um, ley lines, energy circuitry has been interrupted, Bucharest is now a very imbalanced place. And many people feel tired, agitated, nervous, and so on in that city. And everybody's talking about it, right? Because the energy dynamics of the area is being imbalanced by our constructions and our, you know, everything we did there. And if yes. that would be balanced, the whole country and the whole planet will be better. Simple as that. It's a technology, if you think of it. Yes, and uh, I, I agree with you. This is very interesting. And as far as I know, each um, site has its own uh, chakra system. I know in Egypt, there is a chakra way of uh, attending or visiting that yes. region. Also, Sedona yes. has um, its own uh, chakra yeah. uh, points, and I read about it. Yes. So, uh, these small chakras all over the world are yeah. summing up the uh, chakra of Mother Earth. And mm -hmm. as you said, if we impact this system, everything else starts to, to fall apart. Yes. And we see the, uh, the migration path of animals like um, elephants, let's say, with, if we cut a highway through their migration path, they will oh, yeah. still go there. They will still want to follow their instinct, yes. but we are cutting off uh, their ancient and sacred way of, of living. Yes. Yes, the animals are very impacted as well. And... Um... For example, with the technology that we're having now, like Wi-Fi, this is a very powerful impact on their navigation system. And there are bees and birds that can no longer find their navigation method. They can no longer follow their navigation methods because it's so, so impacted by the um, Wi-Fi signals and other types of, other types of uh, EMF, electromagnetic stress that is generated everywhere. And that's impacting us as well, but we don't notice that much. Some of us, I personally notice a lot. Um, and every year in Romania, speaking of these specific ways of traveling in these sacred sites, every year in Romania in August, after the Pranic Festival in Romania, which is a festival with people that are nourished by light or chi or prana and they don't need physical food and they explain to everybody how they do it and they practice with everyone and uh, we are in an amazing retreat with them for four days august 15 to 18 after the festival we go to these sacred sites uh, we visit the Sphinx, we have visit the, the Temple of Wishes, we visit certain caves, and so on and so forth. But there's a specific order to these points. You can't, you can't go, cause sometimes people are, are asking me, why didn't we go there first, or why didn't we stay there longer, or why didn't we start, start earlier or later? And I'm saying, there's a specific rhythm, and it's like clockwork. And you cannot go wrong with it. You have to follow that specific rhythm and that specific order to get this specific result in your energy field and with the sacred sites as well. We have a ley line, an energy line, a meridian if you want, that is called the planetary anahata or the planetary heart chakra. It's looking like the Fibonacci spiral. Uh, it's starting somewhere in uh, it's starting somewhere in Greece in the Athos, and it's going to through Bulgaria and so on, Medjugorje and so on, and it's entering Romania, and it's going through our mountains, touching on these specific points that we visit in the summer, and one of them being the Sphinx and as I mentioned the Temple of Wishes and so on. And it's very, very powerful to walk on that line, specifically. Not many know it. Not many uh, are aware that it exists. And yet, when we do that trip, people's lives changes completely. Like from 
job changes, relationship changes, health changes, awareness changes, everything. In one or two years, I see them again. They are a different person, completely. Some have been contacted by light beings. Some have had dreams or awarenesses or aha moments or just healings. But, you know, I'm not even bragging about it because I'm not doing it. I'm just witnessing and holding space for what's happening. I have no idea what will happen to the group over the, you know, the travel. But it's amazing how things are evolving. And it's called the trip of the sun because we are going to the pre-Christian Satan worshipping places where other civilizations all over the planet and I'm going to the next topic, which is megalithic constructions, right? Uh, sacred civilizations all over the planet have built specific monuments or have held specific rituals to worship the sun and the stars and the planets and they were aware of certain cosmic rhythms and they are, were very much aware of how to communicate to the cosmos and to the beings who are in the cosmos. So it's a fantastic thing to connect to. Yes, indeed. And everything is fascinating to uh, um, understand and find out this, this piece of uh, history, ancient history and civilization on uh, our own country and then everywhere else in the world when, when yes. we visit. And uh, Christian, I have a very tough question for you because you mentioned uh, Nassim Haramein. Have you been able to convert him to a pranic approach? <laughs> you know what? Nassim Haramim has had five years in his youth that he has lived in a van in the desert. And wow. three of those years, he has been a breatharian. Six months, the last six months of those three years, he hasn't even consumed liquids. How cool is that? I didn't have to do anything. I was just, the red carpet was there, you know? So because he's converted. He has already had the experience in his youth. He was also many times levitating off his bed while he was sleeping. So if people enter his room, he would be up in the air. So he has the technology of it in his body already. There was no need for me to argument or demonstrate or explain or anything he has lifetimes you know in this tradition so we are so lucky that the science is backing it up and that we have people in the scientific world that have had that experience right beautiful. so beautiful. yeah the question is just beautiful it's not tough at all and i'm going to send you the videos where we have these conversations that we had a whole podcast about it and it was the first time where he where he has spoken about it publicly because a scientist is not really meant to do this type of um, affirmations right but he is cautious enough to know that explaining this to the, pro the to the public is a even further proof of free energy and autonomy and everything else that he's researching because once we prove it in our human body our technology is following it up instantly. It's backing it up. Yes. Yeah. We need that type of technology for sure. We're Christiana, only, thank you very much. We're only ca capable of having the technology that our consciousness is aligned with. Yes. So once we are consciously aligned to physical autonomy and no longer needing physical food, we are able to have free energy on the planet. Very easy. Yes. So, Christiana, people can go to your website to find out more about your programs and how can uh, they get in contact with you, correct? Yes, absolutely. You can find me on Instagram. My name is Eltrayan, so you find Eltrayan9, the way it's written here on Zoom. You can find me on Facebook, Christiana Eltrayan, and there's the website, soulhealingacademy.com slash events. This is where you find our events. Uh, there's a wide range of articles on scientific and holistic topics that we've talked about today that you can find there. There are fragments of my books. You can find my books and the other uh, creations that I've had. I've written eight books so far. And um, I'm happy to connect with you all. 
Thank you very much for uh, all your work, for everything you put out in the world, uh, the positive energy. My pleasure. And uh, thank you for attending uh, the summit. <laughs> thank you, everyone, for creating it. And uh, hope to see you soon in Romania, right? Especially you, yes. Claudio, that you are born here. Come home. <laughs> thank you. Thank uh, you. Welcome. Okay. And uh, thank you everyone for uh, watching uh, an episode of uh, our uh, interesting uh, summit. Please come back to the next um, episode. They will run for the first for four days and then you can uh, acquire them uh, online. Thank you very much. Until next time. Love and gratitude. Love and gratitude. Recording stopped. Mm -hmm.